Go for it. Okay. <laughs> Everybody stand for our opening song.
inspires you. Wherever you are, God is, and all is well. Mm. I love the long version. I know we do the, the shorter version every Sunday at the end of our service, and it's absolutely beautiful. But this long version is just really special, you know. It's deeper, it's richer, you know. So let us stand now <coughs> and say our affirmation. <coughs> Excuse me. Together. Unity Williamsburg is a radiant center of divine life, life, and love. We are a thriving, prosperous, spiritual community that honors the divine presence in all and celebrates our oneness through loving service in our community. And while we're standing, let's greet each other this morning and say the Christ in you greets the Christ in me as we greet each one in place. <laughs> the Christ in me greets the Christ in you. The Christ in me greets the Christ in you. And thank you all for wearing your mask and social distancing. We're doing our best to follow the rules, and I am very grateful. Thank you. Let us together pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Evil for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now if we'll continue standing, and let's sing our next congregational song, Surely the Presence, and we all know this one, don't we? Prayers and he is going home to sweet prayers for safe trip back home. 
this band. Two. Two. Um, prayers for my daughter, Caitlin, for guidance. Hmm. <clears throat> um, celebration of my daughter, Sarah's 10th birthday. Yeah, yeah, she had a birthday. She's double digits now. <laughs> <laughs> Jam? I just want to say a thank you to God for this beautiful place that we have to be and the beautiful messages that you've given to us. Oh, thank you. And messages you've given to us. That's why we're still here, Jam. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Prayers for my son, Chris, who is a waiting word on a job. Oh, there you go. Yes. Success. We see success. Anyone else? Okay, together we're going to do our prayer. And, and instead of me standing up here by myself and doing this prayer, Jenny and I decided that we should all pray together for the, the whole community. So this prayer is, is a prayer of oneness. We all pray together. And, um, uh, and with praying together, we feel that it's more powerful and, and it's more special. So let's pray together. As we center ourselves in the one presence and one power, we realize that our thoughts have the power to heal and bless. We send them out now, carrying love, peace, joy, and life to situations and celebrations that have been requested. Thought by thought and prayer by prayer, we transform the world. So now, um, Bob Osmond is our platform assistant today, so Bob, come on up. There you go. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. This is the day the Lord hath made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, when I went out to get the paper this morning, I thought, oh my gosh, we've gone overnight from summer to fall. And uh, it reminded me how I felt back in my high school days when I was living in Illinois and playing football in September, and it was a great time. So anyhow, <laughs> welcome to the fall. Every season is wonderful under God. Uh, let me start off. Uh, uh, Reverend Jenny isn't here today, but I hope she's watching. Uh, two weeks ago when she uh, opened, she reminisced a little bit about how we, uh, you know, were in different places and how we moved around and then we finally got here. And I thought she triggered some thoughts in my mind. I thought I'd just remind everybody a little bit. Uh, we actually uh, had been looking for a building for almost two years and hadn't had any luck. And <clears throat> We finally got to the point where Brian Haas, if you remember Brian Haas, he's an engineer, designed a circular uh, church for us. And, uh, Reverend, and when we found out we had to leave that church there on board, what was that called again? Christ Church? Or, church of yeah, Christ. Church of Christ. Uh, and we knew we had to leave there. Jenny asked me if I would join the uh, search committee for the building and, and do what we could. So I had this meeting with Vince Campana, and we were looking at lots to where we could put this circular building. And we found one that was there on uh, Warwick Avenue, up, I can't remember, towards the north, but near a gas station, it would have been a good, good spot. And he said to me, why are you gonna build one if there's a church available? And I said, well, we've been looking for two years, we haven't found one. He said, I have one in Williamsburg, I want you to look at it. So we drove up here, I came in, walked through this building, went back out, picked up my cell phone and said, Jenny, get up here, quick. <laughs> and uh, 15 minutes later, she was up here and the two of us walked through again and looked at it and we both looked at each other and said, this is it, this is the So uh, we, we uh, you all probably don't remember, but it was really in pretty bad shape. This carpet was in such a pretty purple. 
I mean, you couldn't even see the color. And it was a huge curtain that came all the way across here. And, 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 and it was like about right here, so it was only a small space and you couldn't see any of this back here. And, and the, 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 our fellowship room in the back was totally unfinished. So it wasn't in real good shape, but we certainly could see the potential for it. And since then, you know, it's been transformed in this lovely, lovely, lovely little church. And I can't even begin to mention the number of times that we've had visitors who have come here, and even if they've only been here one time, would come up to the minister and say, I have never walked in a church before where I felt so comfortable in just being here for a few minutes. So that speaks well, not only of the physical surroundings, but of the people who, who are here as well, who are bringing love into it. So I just wanted to throw that out and reminisce a little bit. So. And as you know, I always like to bring a little humor when I'm the platform assistant, uh, something to do with the church. So here's my one for today. So uh, <clears throat> this minister had just given a very uh, wonderful talk about tithing and uh, felt that he had made his point pretty strongly. So he ended it by saying, well, I have some good news and some bad news. He said, the good news is we now have enough money to pay off our mortgage. Everybody went, oh, I can't cry. The bad news is still in your pocket. I thought that was appropriate for today. <clears throat> okay, so our daily word. And our daily word, of course, is a, is a monthly bulletin that's put out by Unity Headquarters. And it's a thought for the day. And today's thought is... I share the joy and love of God when I smile. And can everyone say that with me? I share the joy and love of God when I smile. Even if a language barrier prevents me from understanding another's words, I know that most people will respond to a friendly smile. My smile can convey goodwill it can communicate delight from an unexpected blessing, or it can inspire awe at the sight of a star-spilled night sky. A child not able to talk shares love and joy quite effectively with a sunny smile. I feel happy when others smile at me. This friendly, welcoming gesture reminds me that we are all one in spirit. Smiling at my reflection in a mirror, I see the light that shines from me. I feel quickened awareness of the divine love and joy that is present everywhere as I realize how simply and beautifully my smile can express that love and joy without any need for words. So take that with you and smile, smile, smile. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. From the book of Numbers. Good thought for the day. <clears throat> the scripture reading for today, and uh, if any of you don't quite understand this, as I don't, Reverend Denise has promised that she will make it clear during her talk. So, if you are searching, you must not stop until you find. When you find, however, you will become troubled. Your confusion will give way to wonder, and in wonder you will reign over all things. Your sovereignty will be your rest. Hmm. And that's from the Gospel of Thomas. And honestly, I don't know how to pronounce that word. Lodgen. What is it? Lodgen. Lodgen? Lodgen. Lodgen, too. Okay. So, uh, we're going to have a special song by Robert Hodge, and then Reverend Denise, his talk for today is, Are You Saved? And, uh, and then I will come back and read the announcements. Thank you. You know, I think I speak for everybody involved in the preparation of the service, that when things fall together and it all makes perfect sense, it's so rewarding. And honestly, Bob, even though you said you didn't fully understand what you just said, you just tied it into my song so beautifully that now I'm excited about what I picked. So <laughs> you'll love this song. 
So when someone asks me that question, I mean, the hair on the back of my neck stands up, and I just really bristle. It, it just, <laughs> you know? But what these well-meaning people are really asking us is if you believe that Jesus died on the cross for our sins in order for our salvation to be possible. If you do believe this, then you're in a special club, and when you die, you go to heaven. <clears throat> if you don't believe, you don't get the special handshake, they don't give you the secret handshake, and when you die, you're going to hell. Right? Right. right. So salvation, <clears throat> savior, or being saved, they're really prickly words for me in the Christian church, Christian gospel, Christian topic, and they carry a lot of baggage for a lot of people. And it's fair to say that these two points of view concerning the life and death of Jesus developed early within the Christ Christianity. And one point being saved is in the West, and a different point is the East, which I'll share with you. These two branches of Christianity emphasized either totological or sophiological points of view. In 325 AD, here's a history lesson, folks. Don't worry, you won't be Christ. In 325 AD at the Council of Nicaea, the church fathers came together and decided which religious writings would make up what we now call the New Testament, and they wrote the creed of the Christian faith. And to this day, soteriological point of view is prominent in the West. So that's over 1,500 years people have been thinking the same thing. They established in what theologians refer to as the eschatology, or the ultimate destiny of humanity. It was decided at that time that Jesus was the only Son of God, that he came to this world on a mission of teaching and healing, that he was crucified, died for our sins, rose again, and ascended into heaven. And we are now asked to believe this. And when you couple that with St. Augustine's new, doc new doctrine of the original sin, only our hope to heaven is that we are being forgiven and we are... In the original Aramaic of Jesus and his followers, there was no word for salvation. Salvation was understood as a bestowal of life, and to be saved was to be made alive. Hence, when Jesus was talking to Nicodemus and saying, he has to be born again. And Nicodemus says, well, no, I'm an adult. I can't go back into my mother's womb. Well, you need to be born again. You need to be made alive. The sophiological Christianity focuses on the path and emphasizes how Jesus is like all of us, how what he did in himself is something we are also called to do in ourselves. Also, by contrast, soteriology tends to emphasize how Jesus is different from us, begotten, not made, belonging to a higher order of being, and thus uniquely positioned as our mediator. I'm quoted again in Cynthia's book, The Wisdom of Jesus. She says, Jesus' path was exactly that, a radically unmanageable simplicity. Nothing held back, nothing held onto. It was almost too much for his followers to bear. Within the Gospels themselves, we see a tendency to rope him back in again and turn his teachings into a manageable complexity. Take his radically simple saying, those who would lose their life will find it, and those who would keep it will lose it. Very quickly, the Gospels add a caveat, caveat. Those who would lose their life for my sake and the sake of the Gospel will find it. That may be the way you've always heard this teaching, even though most biblical scholars agree that the italicized words were later added. But you can see what this little addition has done. It has shifted the ballpark away from the transformation of consciousness, Jesus' original intention, into martyrdom, a set of sacrificial actions you can perform with your egoic operating system 
still in, intact. So we see here that the path of the ancient Christ Christians was the practice of living remembrance. <clears throat> Remembering and living as Jesus did and taught. And unity is aligned with the sociology doctrine. Unity is known as practical Christianity. We remember and we try to live our lives as Jesus taught and lived his life. And I understand some days are harder than others. <clears throat> we know that. But we do our best. And like the Gospels of Mary, Thomas, and Philip, unity focuses not on the process of salvation, but on the wisdom of the divine and the internal transformation that Jesus went through and that we can go through as well. Jesus wasn't understood to be followed or idealized, but rather as the master of his path. This transformational process, this path that Jesus walked, not because he was the only one who could walk it, but for us to see that it could be done. In unity, we see Jesus as our way shower, as our brother. We follow his path. Eric Butterworth, who is a wonderful unity minister, has written many books, highly recommend them all. He says, Jesus was not one in whom God specialized, but one who specialized in God. And unity to be saved is to have the Christ consciousness, to live the Christ consciousness, to recognize the presence and the power to realize there, <clears throat> this is more than an intellectual acceptance. It is the deep soul experience that comes when the heart and the mind are united in the realization that we are one with God. With this awareness, we see and we know that there is no separation, not between God and humans, not between humans and humans. And I would go farther, that this Christ consciousness, we see and know that we are one with all living beings on the web of life. And quite frankly, I think Jesus would have been called a shaman in his day. Truly. He saw that we were one, that we were one with our Creator, and He lived that oneness. <clears throat> and now, Bob, I'm going to explain the scripture. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Bob read the scripture from the Gospel of Thomas. If you are searching, you must not stop until you find. When you find, however, you will become troubled. Your confusion will give way to wonder. And wonder you will reign over all things. Your sovereignty will be your rest. So in this scripture, we see that this person is following a path, right? A journey within. And it may be difficult and troubling at times. Sometimes we'll be confused. We'll be disoriented. Because this new information is shaking up an old paradigm. Our old beliefs. Emily Cady refers to this in her book, Lessons in Truth. <clears throat> chemicalization. That when we start going within, it really stirs things up. And things just, just don't seem true anymore for us. And when it doesn't seem true, we really become confused because we believe these things for so, so long. And we may become angry. Not only angry at ourselves because we see that this is a truth and how could I follow this? How could I believe this? But angry at other people because they taught us this. And we can be very hard on ourselves. Very hard on ourselves. How could you have believed this? How could you have, have done this? But we're, we're on a path. It's a transformational path. And we need to realize that we are different than what we were two minutes ago. What we were 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Me being raised in the Catholic faith, a whole different ball of wax. I took some of it because I love the ritual. But at the same time, I can't, what do they have, 20 some beliefs that they go through in the beginning of the service? And, and I think I still agree with one. 
<laughs> and I couldn't even tell you what it is right now. I, I realized that when I went to uh, one of my granddaughter's um, baptisms. I go, okay, I can agree with that one. Not the rest of them. But that's okay. That's okay. I didn't. I wasn't angry with my parents because that's what they. That's what we did when we were growing up. You know, that's what that's what they were used to. I was angry at myself sometimes as to why didn't I see this sooner. But as we all grow older and we go out into the world, we read and see and do different things, and we realize it's okay because we evolve by doing and reading and seeing different things. That it's okay. So we need to be gentle with ourselves when we go through this time. We go within. And then eventually, over time, we make room for what this gospel calls the wonder, <coughs> the truth, the God within, the Christ within. A new universe, a new paradigm begins to weave itself together within us and around us. And we come to rest on this new foundation. And we're able to release what no longer serves us. As the, Christer, as the scripture says, in the wonder you will, reign, you will reign over all things. Your sovereignty will be your rest. And once we realize, once we connect with the Christ within, once we start following that path that Jesus taught us, the way shower, we can rest because we know we are, we are following truth. We realize that the kingdom of heaven is within us right now. We don't need to be saved for some time later when we die. We don't have to. We awaken to the consciousness within us when we follow his path. We awaken. It's a whole new way of looking at the world. A transform awareness that literally turns the world into a different place. We see with different eyes. Our heart is open wider. Being saved or salvation is actually waking up, becoming more alive, more present, living remembrance. Salvation is a personal transformation. It is not something that's one day given or earned by a force that is outside of ourselves. Salvation comes within. And I'm going to quote again from Cynthia Burgold's book, The Wisdom of Jesus. As we actually taste the flavor of what he's teaching, we begin to see that it's not proverbs for daily living or ways of being virtuous. He's proposing a total meltdown and recasting of human consciousness bursting through a tiny acorn selfhood that we arrived on the planet with into an oak tree of our fully realized personhood. He pushes us toward it, teases us, taunts us, encourages us, and ultimately walks us there. So if the next time someone asks you, are you saved? You can say, yes, I see the wonder, and Jesus showed me the way. So let's take a time for meditation. Let us rest in our seats. Take a nice deep breath. Close your eyes if you feel like it, if it's comfortable to you. And as we take our deep breaths, we allow our body to relax. Relax into our seat. And as we go within, we go within and touch that heart space, that heart space that is open wide. And we connect ourselves to the Christ consciousness that is within us, in us all. That unconditional love and light that not only we are, but it's all around us. And we tap into that and we feel that love that Jesus has for us. We feel that love flowing through us. 
when we feel the light of our Creator, God, Divine One, Infinite Intelligence, whatever you wish to call our Creator, we feel that unconditional love flowing through us as the Christ Consciousness. And let us just sit in that presence and feel the wonder of it all. Let's sit in the silence. Now as we come back into this room, open your eyes when you're ready, and as we go through our life, bless the wonder that's in your life. Bless it. When times are tough and you can't quite grasp what's going on, bless the wonder that is within you and all around you. And look through different eyes. Allow yourself to look through different eyes. Allow your heart to open wider and wider. And be grateful for all that you have, and all that you are, and all that you will become. Blessed be. Now is the time for all of us to share our gratitude, share our offerings. Um, the basket is in the back, so if you put drop something in there, if you're able, we would be grateful. Um, for the spiritual community to continue. And thank you for that. And let us together say our blessing. <coughs> hold it in your hands, hold it over your hearts. And those of you at home, uh, we are grateful that you are here and grateful for the offerings that you give us. Together, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have all that I give, all that I receive, and all that I am. We are so blessed. <laughs>
going back into your heart and making that relationship with, with God your home base. So this is a song called Home. <laughs> Around the same time that he was the singer in America, 
I was sitting one day planning my show with the promoter, and I was just going over things that might be popular with the Austrian audience. And I said, well, what about Josh Groban? Did they like him? And he bristled. He went, no, if we want to listen to a tenor, we listen to a real one. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow. <laughs> So you never know. <laughs> Funny. Anyhow, excellent job. <laughs> Thank you. Every week. Oh, just done. Uh, for announcements, so let me get my glasses on. Uh, we're going to have a board meeting right after. And it'll be back here in the fellowship hall. And we just want to remind that everybody's invited to attend. It's not a secret meeting or anything. And, we want people to know, you know, how the church is being run. So feel free to attend if you'd like. And Tuesday, to this coming Tuesday evening, Reverend Denise is going to hold a, a, a drumming circle. Yes. And it's going to be at 6.30 here. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, she's asked if you would come 15 minutes early to get set up. And if you don't have a drum, uh, she will provide you with some other instruments that you can play along if you want to want to come. So that's Tuesday night at 6.30. Throughout the month of October, we're having a food drive where we're bringing in canned or dried goods that we're going to donate to Link. And as most of y'all, we've worked with Link for many years, and they help the homeless and people who need food in the area. Today's prayer chaplain is Susan Cardozo, and she will, for those who would like a prayer, are going to meet outside, just, just off the, uh, the front of our, our step on the entrance way there. And uh, another reminder that on each Thursday, Reverend Jan and Ray Whipple uh, have a, uh, a, a prayer service, and if you would like to attend or Come in, either talk to Jan or, or uh, Ray Whipple, and they'll give you the information. Does anyone else have any announcements? I just want yes, to tell people, um, remind them, right up there you see the screen, Silent Unity Prayer Service on Wednesdays. We started it last week, and there's the phone number. Call in, and um, it's about 20 minutes, so uh, we're alternating people. You know, Jude was our first person who... Um, uh, read the prayer service, did the prayer service. So we're, we're, um, it was really nice. What, what do you think, Jude? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it's something they do um, at Silent Unity, and it's the same service for each Wednesday of the month, and that it'll change for the next month. And a lot of churches throughout um, do the same thing. Mm -hmm. So when we do that, when you call in, you realize that all of us are doing it, and even Silent Unity is doing it. So you're, you're tapping into that collective consciousness and um, praying not only for yourself, but praying for others. So it's really powerful. And it's not video, it's just phone. It's right, it's just phone. It's not phone. interactive, you just come and we all introduce ourselves and then yep. go through this sort of the meditation. Mm -hmm. It's a nice break in the middle of the day on a Wednesday. So please join us. Okay. So we... How do you want to do the peace song? Right, Denise, should we just stand up in place? Is that, yeah, let's just stand up, yes. And we'll sing the peace song together. And I just want to thank Denise, all of you. Denise? Yes? Could I say one more thing? <laughs> On the, if you, want, if you want a prayer, there's a, I think, a login there. It's not up there now. The email address? Yes. Okay. Steve, so can you go back? Request. There you go. See the prayer chaplain request? So that's for prayer. If you want prayer, you see the address and the email address. Write that down and um, send your prayer in. And we'll either get back to you if that's what you want, or we'll send it on. Right. So Thank you, Jane. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So if you, or you can email the um, uh, office too. Mm -hmm. So, but if you have a prayer request, prayerunitywilliamsburg at gmail.com. Yep. So there you go. Thank you, Steve, for going back. I appreciate you. And let us all stand for the um, uh, peace song, and then we'll do the prayer of protection. <laughs>
Thank you for being here. It's wonderful seeing you all today. Thank you.